Now that we've covered the requirement for memorizing knowledge, let's discuss the next requirement, the ability to analyze scenarios. This is arguably the most difficult aspect of the test. If not prepared for adequately, you could spend too much time on scenario-based questions, putting yourself in a position where you need to rush. This is never comfortable and can lead to mistakes. Let's go through each step on the slide. Step one, read the question slowly and carefully. Look for modifier words, content words, separate the important from the trivial. Look for repetitions. Step two, read the question again. Step three, read all the answers. Don't just select the first answer that appears correct. Use the process of elimination to narrow down the choices. Step four, make a selection, even if you have to guess. Step five, if you're not positive, select mark for review. You can then access these questions that you're not sure about at the end of the test and review them all. Now, modifier words can easily trip you up if you're not paying attention. I use them to refer to words that change the meaning of and expected answer for the question. Examples include choose to, not, do not, accept, which of the following are true, always, never, only, you get the point. Look for these and if you see them, reevaluate the question in the context of the modifier word. Context words are clues and help you answer the question if you can spot them. I use this term to refer to words that hint at the functional area, feature, setting, permission, etc. being queried. Examples include automate, share, permission, parent-child, custom standard object, etc. Salesforce will often include extra details in scenario-based questions that seem to provide context but aren't essential in understanding what the question is really asking. This is trivial information. Separating the important from the trivial is an important skill to develop. In step one, by repetitions, I mean content that may have been described more than once in the exam. Sometimes you'll be asked a question early in the exam and content relevant to that answer will be described later in the exam, or vice versa. Be on the lookout for these repetitions as they can sometimes help you answer one or more questions. So, how do you get good at answering scenario-based questions? By answering a lot of scenario-based questions. Practice tests are one of the most important study tools in your toolbox. During my preparation for the Admin 201 exam, I took over 20 full practice tests. I recommend you do the same. Over time, you'll innately understand what is trivial, what is important, you'll recognize the modifier and context words, and most importantly, you'll be able to do it quickly. Remember, this is a time test, and you'll need extra time at the end to review answers that you're unsure of. Examples are always helpful, so let's take a practice test question and break it down into its components to demo the question analysis process. Here's a sample scenario-based question that I borrowed from the internet. It's similar to what you'll see on the test in both content and format. Please take a moment to read it thoroughly as well as all of the answers. Now, let's break it down and examine it through the lens of modifier, context, and trivial or distractor words. Modifier words are in red. The question makes it clear that we only want answers that are true, and we need to select at least two answers. Watch out for conjunctions like and that change the meaning of the sentence. In answer A, are we positive that approvers can receive and respond to approval requests via email? Also watch out for absolutes like always, never, all, and none. Answer B is a good example and uses always and all. Are we positive that the record is always locked for all users? Be on the lookout for words that limit and delimit such as any and only. We can see these in answers C and D. In answer C, are we positive that only users can be assigned approval requests? And in answer D, is chatter really an option for any standard or custom object? Moving on to context words, these are in green. Scanning the question tells us that the overall focus of the question is approval processes and that we're approaching our analysis of the question from the point of view of a system administrator instead of some other user. Scanning the answers reveals that we need to pick out true statements related to methods for requesting approval, as mentioned in answers A and D, assignment of approvers, as mentioned in answer C, and record locking within the approval process, as mentioned in answer B. This helps us further focus our thought processes. Next, we take a look at trivial words in blue. Is it essential to know that we're dealing with the finance department or that the approval is for paid time off requests? Probably not. So we discard this information and we don't spend any additional time considering it further. You can see how scenario-based questions can take a while to read, analyze, and choose the correct answer or answers. This is why it's essential that you practice. Take lots of practice tests. Incidentally, 
If you're wondering what the correct two answers are, they're A and D.